Today I want to talk about logic and especially the reason why I got out of this field. Common sense, uh, user brain kind of things. And I have a few pieces of evidence I want to show you without being, um, without taking too long. But mainly the reason why I jumped ship, uh, people kept their, uh, their worship of these reality shows and their worship of the people that are actually um, contradict themselves and, and can't seem to tell the truth sometimes. Uh, but that's what I'm going to talk about, so stick around. And now we interrupt, disrupt, and crash this station. The man fighting for peace, his legacy, truth in a sea of stupid. Filtered for your sarcastic enjoyment, Ghost Getter. This is one of those things where I got to say, use your brain. Use your logic, okay? There are a few points I want to make, and I've made this on my show uh, last week, and I talked about it, but I figured it had to be addressed. The uh, logic of it is, okay, first of all, and I talked about this, um, one of the things that I brought up is the fact that um, everyone seems to... It, it's my argument about... Um, if it's demonic or if it's really a dead person, which I don't believe it's really a dead person. I never have. Um, and I've always tried to, and I've been deceived a few times into headed in that direction. But in the end, I got the real answers I was looking for. Uh, my brain has been open to seeing things and, and how they are. Uh, reality, so to speak, instead of people stuck in uh, things that aren't realistic. And one of the things I thought about, um, which no one can seem to answer, is the little girl ghost. I find it very interesting that this uh, so-called little girl ghost seems to pop up in every haunted place on the planet. Uh, doesn't matter what country, doesn't matter what city, doesn't matter what town, doesn't matter what house. Uh, it could be a business, could be a hotel, could be a house, could be bed and breakfast, could be a... Uh, uh, old abandoned automobile factory and it's always funny that it's always the same little girl or little girl or little boy together or it's either the and which get into also the woman in white that was pregnant or lost her child or the husband left her and it's staring out the window in a hotel room uh the same thing over and over and over again and what really I find strikingly interesting is people don't seem to get that. People don't seem to uh, realize that and can't seem to think about the logic of all of it. Why is it always the same person? Why do we have millions and millions of people over the last thousands of years since uh, Adam and Eve? How can we do not have, of all these people that have died tragically, now we've had people die tragically you know, not as many people die naturally and so-called go to the light, like everybody says or these psychics say or whatever all these people seem to have made up because it definitely isn't the, isn't in the Bible and I wish somebody would show me, uh, but you can't and no one has. Um, but I find it strikingly interesting that we have thousands and thousands, millions of people, let's go millions, have died since Adam and Eve and yet... We only have a few ghosts in the world. We only have one little girl in a house or this same lady in white. And it's always one or two people. But what I find incredibly interesting is how come we don't have thousands of people bother bothering you or millions of people bothering you? How come it's always one or two or a couple? And how come it takes so long? to get one EVP or to have anything happen. When we have thousands of people that supposedly have power to do whatever they want after they're dead. And how do you know what their powers are and how do you know where they get these powers? Where do you find this information from? Did you get it from the movie Ghost when the guy tried to kick the can? How do you get this information? And I find it strikingly interesting that these people always seem to know what they they think they know what they're talking about but they just can't seem to answer the question here's a case in point this is a um 
a piece of audio that I got from, uh, talked about on my show quite some time ago. Somebody that was claiming that, you know, they speak into the dead and talk to psychics, and it was at a convention and all this stuff, and they were a psychic talking to the dead, doing all this stuff with a Ouija board, which I do not uh, accept or tell people to use. Um, but this woman, this is incredibly, incredibly dumb. Listen to this piece of audio. And this is called the angel idea. It's very interesting. Right. It, <clears throat> that was with Noreen Balvajic. 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 Another. There you go. Balvajic. <laughs> person Noreen that doesn't Balavich. have any. She's a fabulous lady. Has a great a uh, YouTube show. Check her out. You can find her link on my website under videos uh, I've done. Um, Another person that made uh, up stories. She, we did, a, we did, I think it was a couple hours, a couple hours and a half, and she invited me on, and it was my very first uh, live Ouija show uh, taped. I do, although I do it for people that might come to me or I go to them. No, that thanks. was, I don't really do it on the internet. <clears throat> I refrain from that for a, for multiple reasons. Can't handle uh, the truth. Ones, I don't need to prove anything or have people yeah. buy into what Don't I'm need doing. to prove anything really because share. you can't. And I'm honored to be a spokesperson <laughs> and to help share this information that the guys can't come forth and give. So for that reason, I just don't want to hear all the, the flack. And if people give me flack, I just say, whatever, I'm going to do my Ouija board anyway. Yeah, I'm going to so, lie. Um, anyway, so I'm not going to follow God's law anyway. We had an opportunity to have a Shit, huge audience fist. there. And we had a, a, the gamut of questions. And you can go back and check it out. We've, got, we've talked to about animals that have died, people that have died, personal questions, okay. global um, consciousness questions, all kinds of things happen. Right. And they have, have no problem addressing any question okay. that you may have. So that's that's what started. And then now my question is, okay, where did you get this information from? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the Ouija board anyway. I don't care what anybody says, whether it's true or not, whether I have proof or not. I'm gonna do what I want to do, and that's this is the problem with the field. Okay, people do what they want to do regardless. In the first place, stop using the excuse. Stop using the excuse that I want to learn and I want I want to find out the truth. When you really don't want to find out the truth. Because you're told the truth all the time and it's just something you don't want to hear. Because if you're told the truth, that means you would have to change your lifestyle. And that's just something you just can't do. Okay? Uh, secondly, this woman here says that, they, you know, Blanche, you know, where does she get this proof from? And she says that she talks to the dead. Okay, where'd you get this proof from? Now, I was told by one person I argued with once and couldn't answer me because she couldn't answer me. She got angry. And I'm just asking for a logical answer. If you can't seem to answer or debate me, which she got mad and started insulting, and then she, you know, blocked me off of Facebook. Why? Why do you need to do that? All you have to do is just answer the question. If you can't seem to use a logical answer or debate in a logical, reasonable, uh, adult manner, and you have to go that route, it means you're wrong. And you refuse to listen to anything else because you don't want to change. So stop saying that I want answers and I want the truth because that's a lie. So it's logic. Where do you get these answers from? Who taught you this? Because it's definitely not in the Bible. Well, they turn around and then they say that I don't believe in the Bible because it was written by man, which I'm going to get into that later with uh, chip coffee or, you know, broken mocha. <laughs> but she gets into this and I ask the question, where do you get this from? Who taught you this? How do you know? And like that woman that blocked me off of Facebook, she told me it's because I have a feeling. Okay. What kind of feeling? Uh, I know it's people and I know it's certain people like my grandmother who I talk to because I get the feeling. So I have feelings all the time, but usually I'm wrong. Uh, I had a feeling I was going to be a billionaire when I was younger. I was wrong about that. I had a feeling that uh, I was going to be, um, you know, better looking than what I am, but I was wrong about that. So I have many feelings and I'm never right about. And just because they told you information that only your grandmother knew. doesn't mean anything because demons can do that. They've been doing it since the beginning of time. They've been around for thousands of years. And what makes you think they don't know all this information already? They know more than you do. And they know how many hairs you have on your head. 
They know every secret. They know every lie and they know every sin and every bad thing you've ever done in your life and everything that you're hiding. They know it. So, um, they, they know every trick in the book. So the feeling that I have my grandmother, how do you know that they can't make you feel that way? How do you know that they can't, uh, create the, the smell or create the perfume scent or create the, the environment of your grandparents? How do you know they don't do that? So you can't answer that question. And as long as you can't answer that question, then you're wrong. This is just logic. It's logic. Everybody in this field seems to think they know everything, but no one seems to have an answer. No one seems to tell you actually where they get their information from. And what, and this is getting into the second thing, demonologists, certain types of demonologists, certain types of demonologists that claim that they use religion or ghost hunters that claim they use religion or God or the Bible and everything else. But yet, just like John Zaff is saying that he can tell you the difference between a ghost and a demon. This is a guy that supposedly uses crosses and prays and things during uh, investigations and has, you know, has to have Jesus or has to have God to protect him and St. Michael and all this other stuff. And yet it clearly says in several translations in the Bible that ghosts do not exist. The dead do not exist. Um, rise up. It says that in several different translations. Even in this piece of audio, listen to this piece of audio, um, which is the truth about what it really says about ghosts and demons. And by the way, that woman was Kim Dahlman, the Ouijaologist, and this is called the Bible Flock Box, which I find interesting. Many of death's theories are based on the supposition that we have an immortal soul that goes straight to heaven or hell when we die Didn't or can wander the earth in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> but would you be surprised to discover that the Bible teaches no such thing? As a matter of fact, the Bible teaches the exact opposite. For instance, Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4 states, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 15 and 16 states, Only God has immortality. Putting it in these words, the blessed and holy potentate, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who only hath immortality. And the Bible tells us that it is not until the second and coming the dead of know Jesus nothing. that we will receive immortality. Note 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 to 53. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on corruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. First, second, third. So if the Bible teaches that we don't have an immortal soul, if it teaches the soul will die, and if it teaches that only God has immortality, where did this teaching of the immortal soul come from? It comes from the serpent's mouth in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. Let me give you the context. I'll read verses Satan 1 says, through 4. It states, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the Eve. fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. You will not die was the words you of the devil. God. And these words are being repeated in Christian pulpits across the world. You won't die because you have an immortal soul. You'll go on living forever and you'll go straight to Duh. heaven and hell. <laughs> but oh no, my friends, yeah. that is not what the word of God teaches. This is a diabolical deception exactly. of the devil. Thank you. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 states, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. As mentioned before, the Spirit talked about here is the breath of life. It is not some kind of immortal being. Not to mention comparing Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 to Psalm chapter 146 verse 4, which also describes what happens after you die. Psalms uses the word breath in place of spirit. It states, His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth, and that very day his thoughts perish. 
Something else that I would like to mention is, if we did have a living and a mortal soul or spirit that returned to God, why does the Bible say that when we die, our thoughts perish? Thank you. In other words, that we stop thinking. Our thoughts should continue to function if we did, in fact, have an immortal soul or spirit that is a living being inside of us. But that is not the case, according to the Bible. So any idea that a psychic or somebody like Michelle Blasje or anyone like that, ghost hunters, and all these people that claim uh, you don't die, you live forever, you come back and you become gods and blah, 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 came from Satan, (laughs) came from Lucifer, came from the serpent in the beginning of the Bible. That idea, this is probably the reason why most are psychics and people like that go, I don't listen to the Bible because it was written by man. (laughs) And the odd thing about that is like, you know, the argument with Chip Coffee, which he cannot seem to answer ever. And I've brought this up several times is the fact that he says he don't believe in the Bible because it was written by man. And yet, and yet he talks to a spirit guide, which used to be a man who's giving him information from a ghost that used to be a man or a woman and tells him all this stuff. He know he can't see, can't hear, but he's going to believe it because it came from a spirit guide that supposedly was dead. That gives him information from another spirit. (laughs) So if you find a hole, if there's holes in people's stories like chip coffee and, um, and the like, in this field. Oh, leave him alone. He's a nice guy. I don't care how nice you are. Truth is the truth. If there are holes in your store and you can't seem to answer them, then why follow them? It's just common sense logic. It's just it's just basic common sense. If you cannot seem to follow that, if you cannot seem to get it, it's in there. You would not... And for those that claim they don't use the Bible or religion has nothing to do with the power uh, paranormal. God has nothing to do with the paranormal. That makes no sense. That's even worse than someone saying, I don't follow the Bible because it's written by man. That's even worse. Half of you go in and say, I'm going to pray before, you know, so they won't follow me home. That makes no sense. Why pray? Why use the Bible? Why use the cross? Why walk in with the cross? Why use a candle? Why use anything that has to do with anything spiritual if you do not believe in it? It makes no sense whatsoever. And if there is a hole in it, like I said, just logic, common sense logic, why do you use that stupid uh, excuse? Because it is a stupid excuse. There is a radio show that I'm going to play where this is the argument that Chip Coffee made. It was that I hit this on a few years ago. And ever since then, I still do not get an answer about, you know, if he claims that it was written by man, he has Jesus in him as, you know, uh, fake Bishop, uh, (laughs) you know, and all these other people say about him. And yet he does not uh, follow the Bible. Christ does not. Christ preached that, uh, Psychics are part of uh, uh, the occult, and God preached that psychics are part of the cult, and he he did not like when they did that. That states in the Bible when these men were upset that Christ took the demons out of a possessed woman because they were using her to tell the future. Okay, so you have Christ in you. Apparently, Christ wasn't in agreement of people being psychic. So why do you say this? That's another hole in your logic. Makes no sense. But here's that audio. And this is from the Corey Cove show, by the way. Makes sense. Perfect sense. What was the what was the thing about Chicago or about New York and uh... That's all he said was New York, which means nothing. And oh. London, which means nothing. What does that mean? I have no idea. It's an interview with uh, Chip Coffee. You don't know? I don't know. Shouldn't you know? You're a psychic. Shouldn't you know what that means? That's a kind of a misconception that psychics know everything. Mm-hmm. It's they're supposed yeah. to. Uh, I've, I've never claimed that. <laughs> some I don't think they know anything. <laughs> some people do. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, okay. here, explain, explain this to me, I though. I don't understand it. I, I just, but why I don't, do it if When you, you say vague things like New York, 
London, prostate, and then you just say, well, know. not yet. What am I supposed to do with that information? <laughs> I'm not the to messenger. Do with it. Don't kill me. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not going to kill you. I just uh, who, The messenger from who? Who told you about New York, <laughs> really? Here London, and my prostate? Somebody in spirit told me that. You don't know who uh, that is, though? I, not exactly. Uh-huh. So, so they could be related to me. They could not be related could to me. Could be you have demonic. No idea. Just random voices. Could be demons. Couldn't, couldn't just be your own voice in your head, possibly, <laughs> telling you things? How big a skeptic are you? 100%. There's no proof that a psychic has ever proven anything. There's um, zero evidence. Really? Yeah, really. 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 Chip, if there was ever proof that a psychic could actually do what it did, yeah. and it was peer-reviewed, you would win the Nobel Prize for proving the afterlife. Okay. It's never been they proven. There's zero it. evidence. But where are they getting the information from? It's all from? anecdotal. Have you done your research? I don't have to. Where's the information? You don't have to. It's a real uneducated answer. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. G- give me one piece of evidence right, that, that psychics have. Sure. What's your name? Tell me again. Shouldn't you know? Ask a spirit. <laughs> Ask know, somebody that's to above tell my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> that's when that. that's when psychics say right. it doesn't work like that. You tell me. <laughs> um, you don't want me to tell you what's on my mind right now. Go ahead. I'd um, love to hear it. Oh, for three on the last one. Trust me, there's nothing you can say that's going to scare me because you're just making it up, so it doesn't matter. Um, I interviewed. Um, didn't interview. I I did a reading for. And now he's making a it lady up. in Monoman, Minnesota. Now right he's on making it up. Evidently, last year. <laughs> I could tell. She was worried about conceiving and gave me the <laughs> idea that she wanted to try to have a baby. And I said, don't worry, you'll be pregnant by February. Her sister was at my event this past weekend. She's pregnant. Self-fulfilling prophecy. By February. <laughs> Had her baby the morning of my event. Oh, whatever. You know, I pick up names. I pick up things that there's no logical way that I could know. Where are you getting this information people from? People get pregnant. That's that the question. <laughs> people get pregnant. By having sex and getting pregnant, That's, right? So it's it's not like you predicted some you know global flood. No, <laughs> you predicted that a person trying to get pregnant got pregnant. That's right. That's not evidence. That's mm. anecdotal evidence. That's not scientific <laughs> proof. That's a coincidence. You really think it's a coincidence? Of course, it's exactly what it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can you? you know, I'm not us... here to convince or convert you to my ways of thinking. Well, yeah. I'm just saying. And if this is the way you treat guests on your show. No, that's but, pretty but, lousy. But think about think about what you do, though. You think you, about what you, you, you do in treating him, your last guests time, badly. Last time you come came in, in here, you whispered in my ear that yeah. I was going to have a prostate problem, and you probably confronted me the last time I was here. I'm not saying I'm 100 percent right all the uh, time. Yes. Not at all. <laughs> so the spirits lie to you. No, uh, they mislead you. Uh-huh. Why are you being confronted well, and combative? Why would you tell me I have a prostate problem? Why are you being confronted and combative to me when I'm on your show? You don't ha- trust me. You don't have to be on the show. Apparently, because we're over. <laughs> oh, okay. I-, I guess you should have seen this coming, though, that this was going to be combative. <laughs> but that's from the Corey Cove show. But there is another show where he talks about why he doesn't believe in the Bible, and this is interesting. This Fun. is it's interesting. So the deal is this: I, I live with a Pentecostal in my house. Uh-huh. Who you know uh, we don't always no, agree with things, buzz, but, but yeah. and, and you know he has a much more fundamental view of it, Christianity maybe. than I do. And by the way, thank you, Bishop Long, for coming on and saying your kind uh, words. But Kirby, you know he's absolutely right. Every day, in many ways, I pray to God. So God's not an issue with me. <laughs> God and I have a great relationship. Okay. I don't let anybody else interfere in my relationship right. with God. <laughs> but God and I have a great relationship, and uh-huh. anyone will tell you that in my work. I talk a lot about my faith and urge people to have their own positive belief system. Uh, so, you know, mm-hmm. again, we're not that far distant. Our beliefs but, are dis- but, different. But, 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 a chip. There we go. How do you this, explain, is, this is great. And this I, is I hypocrisy go, at go its here, best. I want to have to go here. <laughs> sure. How, how do you explain hypocrisy in at both its best. the New Testament and in the Old Testament, both Testaments now, uh, 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 that Christians are warned to stay away mm-hmm. or not to engage and the dead in don't speak. divination practices. Christians are also told that if they touch uh-huh. the skin of the pig, that they're that that's wrong, or if they eat shellfish, that's wrong. Well, now, or now, wait a minute. Well, they're not supposed to. They're not supposed to. As long as they're not in your country, you can do that. And that if you're, someone works on the Sabbath, you can kill their ass. No, okay. that's not true. You know, all that stuff's in the Bible, so you can't that's be not true. a pick and choose Christian, yeah. Kirby. Well, you well, ought to be no, talking. See, now, Chip, you're, you ought to be talking, you're playing Chip. semantics here. <laughs> and so were you the, in the, that the laws, the laws that you're referring to, uh-huh. because, again, I don't want to get into a theology lesson, but under the Old Testament, we were living under the law. 
Right. And God wanted to show still people living under the law. that living <laughs> under the law isn't what hurting. It's pretty damn... I mean, if you was alive under the in, under the times of the Old Testament, life is pretty miserable. Old or new, it's still God's law. He didn't there. change it overnight. But there are specific <laughs> laws, what, like what you're referring to, that when Christ came, those laws all were null and void. That's not remember true. Remember when Christ came, he said, That's I come true. to fulfill the law. You still have now, to... Now, f- you find any of those kinds of laws... God doesn't change the... In the New Testament. <laughs> but here's... No, but that's as a matter of fact, point. you know, here's the deal. Here's the point. I don't... Here's... I'm not a literalist Christian. I don't believe that the Bible is the definitive 100% Word of God because the Bible was written by man. Just <laughs> like you, just like me, and altered numerous times uh-huh. to meet the egos of lots of monarchs, uh-huh. i.e. King James. The Bible, the Bible has been revised and rewritten uh-huh. and... And and, uh-huh. and and changed to meet the times or the mood of certain individuals. So uh-huh. I don't I don't yeah. look at the Bible. Of course you know not. What I base, you know what I of course base not. my faith on? There's a large difference between religion and faith. <laughs> I have faith in God, and if God uh-huh. wants me to know something, God will put it in my heart, How and do you God know will this? let me know what to feel <laughs> without without my ego being involved. God and I have a very personal relationship, so. If you're asking me if I adhere to the Bible 100%, the answer is absolutely I do not. Now, here's the thing about that. <laughs> I was going to hit my head and just crack my head on the, bo- you know, the bottle. If you don't believe it because it was written by man, then why do you believe what a spirit tells you if it used to be man? That there's just so many contradicting things, even though I don't believe what that, you know, Kirby says, because, you know, it's not like God said, you know what, forget those laws. We don't have to listen to them anymore. The law is the law, and it's always going to be that way. Of course, it says in the Bible as well, in the beginning, God was the word and the word is God. And he does not change that. Christ has mentioned the laws that we need to follow, such as the Sabbath and the lot. And this is in the New Testament and things like that. Now, he doesn't say in the Bible, if you eat shellfish or don't follow the Sabbath, they'll kill your ass. I don't know where he got that from. But that's not true at all. But the point is, it's contradicting for you to say that you don't listen to it because it's written by man. You can't believe what man says. And you're following what used to be a man, telling you what another man said. So you, can, you cannot, point is, in both of those radio interviews, it's not legit. He's just a person that guesses. And, and if he doesn't guess and he doesn't get it, he doesn't know where he's getting his information from, that is pretty scary. How do you know the information isn't coming from a demon? Boy, don't you feel like a fool all this time if you're being deceived and uh, you're getting this information from a pretty bad source. That's where I would be worried. And that's where I would, well, no, I'm getting it from God. He tells me personally. <laughs> you ever heard the saying, angel poses himself, as an, or God, uh, Satan poses himself, or Lucifer poses himself as, as an angel of light? He comes as an angel of light, deceiving people in the, the, the fact that he's good because he wants to follow um, in God's footsteps and take over the throne. That's why. He comes deceiving people as an angel of light. He can also heal. He can also do many things that you don't know of. But it was written by man, so I shouldn't listen. To I, I don't know anything, what I'm talking about. It's just total hypocrisy. Point is, use your logic. Use your common sense. These people you're following are not who you think they are. Some of them know what they're doing. Some of them have no clue what they're doing. But all of it in the end, you have to stop saying to yourself, I'm trying to find answers and I want to know the truth. If in all reality, you don't want the answers because the answers would mean that you would have to change or stop doing what you're doing. And that is something you refuse to do. You need to be careful what you're stepping into. You wouldn't walk in a 
a road at night that has um, deep trench holes in it, knowing that this road has holes in it, but you're going to walk in anyway with blinders on. This is exactly what this field is. You're walking down a path or walking down the road with blinders on, thinking you know where every hole is. You don't. No one does. And by the way, here's another piece of audio I'm going to give you before I uh, end this. It's a piece of information from an interview from Zach Baggins and Ghost Adventures. You think they're following the right path? You think they're following good instead of evil? Listen to this interview and you tell me different. This is when Ghost Adventures and Zach Baggins was asked, what's the best part of ghost hunting? This is very interesting. And a lot of people probably... Bringing demons home by home. <laughs> That's the best thing is fall, when it falls your home. That, that, that is a true demonic haunting. You know, all these places that we go to, I think, are haunted by human spirits. Uh, but Bobby Mackey's is one of the few that is infested by demons. That is a literal breeding ground for demonic entities. And that takes this whole uh, field of research to a whole other realm. And uh, it's caused a lot of problems, too. And that's a very dangerous place, especially when you go there provoking demons. Something I never recommend because there's things that are more than just a scratch and all that stuff. There's things that come home with you and can wreak hell in your life. So this is some real stuff for you. You can you really get into it. Excited Absolutely. about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. This isn't uh, anything other than real stuff. Mm -hmm. It's very real. I understand. Yeah. Well, they're asked, what's the best part of ghost hunting? And they said, bringing demons home. Uh, when they truly follow you to your, to your place of residence or whatever, bringing them home. Does that sound normal to you? Does that sound like they're uh, people that you really, really want to be friends with? People you really, really want to hang out with? That's not taken out of context. They said the, they were asked the, what's the best part of ghost hunting, and they said bringing demons home, and they are excited about that. After all the darkness that you see uh, with their dungeons and things like that, the point is, use your logic. Everything has a logic in this. Common sense. Use it. It just takes a little smarts. And people don't want to listen because... Uh, they want to do what they want to do. And hey, I'm not telling you not to. I'm just giving you the facts. I've been doing this radio stuff for over 10 years. And I have yet to have anyone tell me, um, such as Chip Coffee and his, you know, I don't believe this because of man and all that stuff. Even though he follows and listens to a man telling him stuff. I've asked psychics, give me the information that tells me, um, that these spirits go into the light. Where are you getting this information from? Who taught you this? The same thing goes with um, with uh, New Age people and the like, and all these New Age religions, and all these people into spiritualism, and all these people into all that stuff. I have said it many times. Where do you get this information from? Who taught you this stuff? Not one has been able to do that. Not one. Why do you think that is? Where do you think this deception is coming from? Where do you think this whole uh, world of this, this, this whole world is coming from? Like I said in the beginning, it, it all uh, spans from Genesis, in the beginning of Genesis. I think it's pretty shocking. And coming from a person that's logical, coming from a person that's realistic, I think I would follow... Uh, the realistic side of it rather than the unrealistic side of it. Don't believe me? I can prove it to you when I go on investigations. I've done it in the past and I definitely know I can do it in the future. I don't play these games and I don't do it for a head rush and I don't do it for the excitement of it like, you know, the people that you heard in these uh, uh, pieces of audio. Think before you act. Uh, thanks everybody for... Uh, being part of the video, I hope you like it. This is part one. I shall have a part two later on. Um, not sure when, but I have a part two to this later on. 
Thanks, everybody, for paying attention and uh, catching the show. Reverse 96 FM, be sure to listen to that 24-7, my station. Go back into the past with me, uh, Reverse 96 FM. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for checking out. The links are on the bottom to uh, catch me on Facebook, Twitter, uh, listen to the station, a whole like. And I thank everybody else for uh, uh, being a part. Uh, Until next time, see ya.